Good morning, everyone. Today is Orange Shirt Day, September 30th here in Canada. Orange Shirt Day is a day to honor the survivors and victims of residential schools and reflect on the atrocities Canada committed against Indigenous peoples. Me, myself, I am wearing an orange shirt today here on the September 30th edition of Coffee with Graham to honor the survivors and victims of the residential school system. I think that this is something that everyone should be doing today, wearing orange to show our support for the Indigenous community here in Canada. And something that I want to promote in today's episode and moving forward here on Coffee with Graham is the Orange Shirt Society. Now, I had a chance to look at their website, which is orangeshirtday.org, and on their donations page, it said that the Orange Shirt Society gratefully acknowledges those donors and corporate partners who make it possible for us to do our work. Fostering Indian residential school reconciliation, raising awareness across Canada of the continuing intergenerational impacts of the schools and of the concept, every child matters is the things that this society stands for. Some of the activities that the donations that people make possible will include the creation and sharing of resources through their website and the website itself. They plan to develop and offer a grant program to help defray expenses through their speaker series as funds become available. I think on a day like this, looking back and reflecting on all the damage that has been done for the Indigenous people here in Canada, I think to promote something like the Orange Shirt Society is just a little step in us finding truth and reconciliation here in Canada. And I know that the process is long. I myself cannot relate to the struggles that Indigenous people go through because I'm not sure if I've said it before, I don't have any Indigenous blood in my in my body no roots whatsoever uh european roots and other roots like that are in my blood but no indigenous roots so i cannot speak to the struggle that indigenous people have faced here in canada firsthand but what i can say is that with us here on the show promoting orange shirts the orange shirt society I think that that is the least that I can do as a just a, a citizen here in Canada being born here. I love this country. I think that it's the greatest country on earth. It's given me opportunity to have a job like this and to talk to amazing people on an everyday basis. But I know that for a lot of people in the world and in this country, privilege is not always something that is given. It it isn't given. You're you're either born with it or you're not. It's as simple as that. But I want to help out in any way I can. And I feel at this point promoting the Orange Shirt Society is uh, one of the ways that I can do that personally. And if you guys want to check it out. We will link the website down below in the description of this episode and of all our episodes moving forward. I did notice that the links that I have been putting up from CanadaHelps.org, I found out today that those links don't exist anymore. My apologies for that. We won't be using those in the, the descriptions of our episodes moving forward here, but we will be promoting the Orange Shirt Day Uh, the Orange Shirt Society by putting the orangeshirtday.org website link in the descriptions of every Coffee with Graham episode moving forward and all the other shows I have here on the network like Rise and Shine Manitoba and The Prospect Show. So here on September 30th on Orange Shirt Day, take some time to reflect and here's to hoping that we find reconciliation and forgiveness 
here soon in Canada. You're not alone. If you need someone to talk to today, please contact Crisis Services Canada by either calling them at 1-833-456-4566 all hours of the day, or you can text them at 45645 at 4 p.m. to 12 a.m. Eastern Time. Remember, you're not alone and Crisis Services Canada is here to help. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Coffee with Graham on ASTV Productions. I'm your host, Graham Forsyth. Coffee with Graham is brought to you by Fabricland, Winkler, Evolve Green, AETI, and Murray Chrysler. Happy to be back here on this Thursday morning for another edition of the show. Thanks to everyone that's taken the time out of their Thursday morning and watching Coffee with Graham here on ASTV. Going to be a good one. Only one guest joined me on the show today, and he's from the Winnipeg High School Hockey League's College Belleville Barracudas coaching staff. It's assistant coach Miguel Marcou. It's been a while since I've spoken to Miguel here on the show. The last time that I talked to him was on our championship rewind series when we did that back in 2020 on the College Belleville Barracudas. The 2019-2020 2019-2020 Winnipeg Free Press Division champions come in to this season with nine returning players, seven grade 12s, and two grade 11s. The rest of the roster will be rookies. I had a chance to ask Miguel in today's episode about the roster with the returning talent and the rookies as well. There's been some changes to the coaching staff as well. We're going to get into that. In today's episode, we also get into how the preseason went for this team, and we also talk about where this team might end up playing this year, whether it be B Division or A Division. It's yet to be decided. So without further ado, let's start today's episode. Let's bring in Miguel Marcu, assistant coach of the College Belvo Barracudas boys hockey team on this edition of Coffee with Graham after the intro here on ASTV Productions. It's been a very long time since this guest has joined Coffee with Graham, but happy to have him back with the high school hockey season around the corner. Thought it'd be nice to have him on. It's the assistant coach of the Belvo Barracudas, the college Belvo Barracudas, Miguel Marcu. Miguel, it's uh, been a very long time, as I said. I know before we started doing this interview, you said that it's been a crazy two weeks for you with you being a school yeah. teacher. I can't even imagine. And with uh, tryouts, you know, coming to a close, it's definitely been a busy time for not only you, but all the uh, other members on the Belleville Barracuda staff. But uh, welcome to the show. Uh, nice to have you on. How have things been with you? Yeah, no, thanks for having me. Uh, I know uh, it's been tough to to meet up, uh, just the whole back to school thing, uh, getting all the kids uh, used to being in school, you know, full time for the full day, every day. It's different. Being 30 kids in the class again is also different, but uh, sports are back. Sports yeah. are back and it's been a long time coming. Uh, there's a lot of excitement. There's been a lot of excitement at school here, not just for hockey, but for sports across the board. I think everybody's excited to right. get back into the things they used to do. Yeah, and uh, I don't want to sound selfish, but that is one thing I was missing the most during the pandemic was just sports like this, high school hockey, uh, junior hockey, you name it, any hockey that uh, you can think of. But, you know, uh, of course, busy time for the whole school right now with all the sports starting up. But let's uh, get down to some hockey here. Coming into this season, you guys got some returning talent still from that championship team back in 2019-2020. Cohen Chang, the Delarone brothers, 
Texas with Xander and Seth, uh, 2019, 2020 Winnipeg free press rookie of the year, Landon Newman, Thomas Moreira, who had a huge preseason, Miles Hamilton, Josh Gross, uh, and Carter Ambrose on the back end and Ethan Vincent, a grade 11 now in net. So just looking at this returning talent, how uh, pleased are you guys to get this group of guys back? Well, you know, as always, Graham, uh, every year, every training camp is a new one. Uh, you hope that your returnees are among your better players. Um, nobody has a guaranteed spot on the team. So every training camp is a new camp every year. Uh, you do, as a coach, rely on the, those returnees to have some sort of experience when it comes to game speed, when it comes to uh, setting the tempo at, at, at practice or in the scrimmages or the inner squad games. And so uh, we're very happy with all of our returnees uh, who displayed everything we needed them uh, to do really in the, in the training camp. And uh, what a difference two years makes. I mean, we have those kids are in grade 10. Uh, seven of them were in grade 10 and Thomas and, and Ethan were grade nines uh, two years ago. Uh, they've all grown. Uh, they've all, they, they seem to have their, their man strength. Now the shots are harder. They're just, they skate yeah. harder. Like it's crazy to think that it's been two years since we did this. And so much changes from uh, when a, a kid shows up to camp as a grade nine or a grade 10. And then now they're showing up as grade 12s or, or grade 11s. And it's just, you know, I'm still mind blown by how some of these guys look out there and like just how much time has passed since the last time I, we saw them on, on skates. And so I've been really been impressed with our returnees. We're happy to have them all back. Uh, we're looking forward to the leadership they're going to provide. That, uh, that championship experience is invaluable. You just, you can't, you can't find that anywhere else really. So it's yeah. unique that we have that this year. Yeah. For sure. And uh, these returning players, uh, you know, like you said, championship experience is uh, very valuable, invaluable. You know, it, it's just something that doesn't really come along quite often uh, unless you win the championship, of course. But like you guys did in 2019, 2020, but going to be exciting to see this group of returning players come out and see how they look from, uh, you know, compared to their first season starting off or from two years ago and into this season. Um, looking at the rookie talent this year, of course, you guys weren't able to have the uh, rookie tournament this year, so you guys didn't get a, get an early look on some of the rookies that are coming up on the team this year. But just speak about the uh, rookie talent that you guys have had the chance to see in camp and preseason. Uh, you know, uh, that's the thing that's been probably the most challenging this year so far is in terms of players we've never seen before. We've truly never seen them before. Uh, as you mentioned, like the rookie tournament gives us a great perspective on what's coming, how kids play, uh, what to expect, what to look for when camp comes and rolls around. Except this year, um, there's some kids that I've I've never even seen in the school because last year we're all split into cohorts and like yeah. I saw some new faces for the first time. And so uh, everybody had, I guess, the same clean slate in terms of like, you're new, you're new to me, I'm new to you. So let's just see what you got kind of thing. Um, but that being said, uh, our rookie class this year is looking very good. Uh, we have some great skill uh, up front and some great skill on defense. Um, we have some rookies in grade 12, grade 11, uh, and grade 10 this year, just because of the gap year from last year. So there's rookies. I think half our team is rookies this year, uh, which is unusual. But uh, just that everybody has grown so much in the last year that even like some of the rookies have size. They've got speed uh, because they're older kids. And so... Uh, we're looking forward to this year, just all around. We have our vets. We have a great group of rookies. Uh, we're lined up to have, a, hopefully have a successful season this year because of that. Just going to that point, you guys had so much more returning talent on the championship team than this team, obviously valuable returning talent coming back. But with this amount of rookies, with uh, the team being younger this year, just how truly valuable we talked about already, how their leadership is going to be valuable. But how truly valuable will that be from the returning players to lead these rookies on the right path? Well, any road to a championship uh, is it's a long one. It's a painful one. Um, there's 
times where you get sick of your teammates because it turned like going that far ex really extends the season by a lot longer than you're used to when you don't go that far. Uh, and it just requires so much leadership in terms of corralling the guys, in terms of, you know, getting people, the, game, the guys ready for games. Um, what it means to like, you know, block a shot in the third period when you don't want to and just stuff like that. Like it's experience like that, that they've, they lived firsthand. And on top of the fact that in a best of three series, uh, we went down one, nothing twice uh, last or two years ago in the, in that playoff run. So we had our backs against the wall and that's experience that you just, you can't, you can talk about it, but it's one thing to live it. Right. And we had guys who lived it twice. And one of the times was with the championship on the line and to win that game, turn around and then eventually win the championship uh, is just the guys know like they, now those guys, those nine guys know what needs to be done in order to go the distance. And that's just experience that you just can't replicate that anywhere. And in high school hockey with, the short series and the quick turnaround because your series is a best of three in four days, basically. Yeah. Uh, it's such a quick turnaround that it's just, it's go, 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 go. And it's such a, it's a unique thing to high school hockey. And so to have guys who have, have been there and done that, uh, it just makes, it just adds more to uh, that leadership value and, and that we expect them to carry this year when, when it's inevitable that we will have our backs against the wall when things get hard when teammates get sick of each other it's going to happen it happens every year and so that's why you need those guys to kind of corral the guys to to get back in line and you know focus on what we're trying to do here yeah for sure and uh just looking back at that championship season that you guys had i remember i was uh in attendance for that quarterfinal matchup that game three against St. Paul's and that was just a phenomenal game of course uh the, the championship everyone uh, who's watched coffee with Graham already knows what uh type of craziness went down there but <laughs> goaltending was huge goaltending yeah. was huge for you guys back then Sam DePoe was the best goaltender in the division no doubt Ethan Vincent back then a grade nine player got some valuable championship experience while you know being on your guys's roster that year him being a great 11 this year and with, you know, the new talent coming up in gold, tell us about the, the goaltending this year for you guys. Well, the one thing that, that that will be good for Ethan is usually in high school, your starting goaltender is your senior guy. Uh, and usually you'll have the grade 12 starter or sometimes you have a grade 11 starter, but for the most part, it'll be an older kid. For Ethan to have lived a full season with us uh, as a grade nine, uh, goalie where he didn't play a lot but he was on the bench he was at all the practices he faced uh, all the shots in practice uh, got up to game speed got into I think he played nine, eight or nine games that year um, it's just experience that uh, will be incredibly useful for him this year uh, being the leader between the pipes for us just as you know a default as being the senior guy um, we have a, a rookie goaltender uh, that'll be joining us this year uh, who had a really good camp. Uh, he moves well. He's, he's young, so there's, there's some learning to be done, but we fully expect uh, our two goaltenders to carry us this year, much like, uh, much like the same road that Sam took before he was in grade 12. Like Everybody kind of goes through that path of taking turns, splitting games, and, and, uh, and supporting each other as a tandem. And we fully expect uh, both of our guys to to pull through for us this year, and that's why we we uh, we chose to make the team we did uh, in that regard, in terms of um, who we want leading us uh, between the pipes this year to hopefully hopefully do it again, <laughs> because yeah. we all, we all know how uh, how important that was in the last run. So you got to have trust in the guys you have in net. Yeah, no doubt about it. So uh, just talking about the roster, the roster at this point is finalized for you guys since preseason ended? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, what, what? just in terms of, you know, you spoke about the talent this year in the tryouts. Uh, obviously, you were talking about how excited you were about the forward group, you know, some strong players coming up on the back end. Of course, you just spoke about the goaltending, but just uh, speak about this year's roster. In 2019-2020, you guys were balanced from forwards to defense to goaltending. What's this year's Volvo Barracuda's roster going to look like compared to other years? It's a different dynamic in terms of 
um, our age. Uh, when we won the championship, I mean, I'd be lying if I told you I expected to win that year because we were so young. Uh, and, and so this year, the young guys that we had are now the senior guys. And so this year we have a bit of an older team. And so our mindset is very much, well, if we have that core of the young guys who helped us win that championship two years ago, as our senior guys now, our expectations should be pretty much the same as the, towards the end of the previous season, right? Which we, when we entered those playoffs, we expected to win. I mean, you don't enter playoffs expecting to lose by any means. And we did. And so we have the same expectation this year for our guys who are now older and a little, little bit more experienced. And so to have uh, our senior guys uh, be our leaders and to be, uh, and to use their experience they've had before, um, we expect this team to achieve great things uh, just because of that factor alone. Yeah, for sure. Like um, it, looking back at it, it was, even though you guys had a lot more returning players on that team, I mean, more returning players than uh, this year, you guys were a younger team back then. Uh, this year, like you said, with uh, some grade 12s being rookies, it's definitely going to be interesting to see uh, how this team is going to go out and perform this year. Uh, talking about some changes that were made from the coaching staff uh two coaches aren't going to be with you from the championship roster uh but there, there's been some changes obviously what uh can you tell us about some of the changes made in the coaching staff this year yeah so um our defensive coaches uh mr govain mr filion have uh, since retired um they have retired as champions and so uh, we were in, in searching for our new defensive coach to take over. And uh, our new defensive coach is Scott Keller. Uh, and Scott's experience uh, as a coach in the community is well known. Uh, he's been involved uh, with girls hockey in particular. Uh, he, he himself played at the University of Minnesota Duluth. Uh, he captained his team as a senior. So yeah. you talk about like experience, that's it right there, right? Scott's got more experience than like all of us put together <laughs> in terms of having played at a high level. And so yeah. he so far has brought a ton of knowledge uh, to our coaching staff. He's brought a lot of uh, outside the box ideas uh, in terms of how he wants to run our defensive systems. And so uh, it's refreshing in many ways to see uh, a different perspective on on hockey, just in terms of uh, the ideas he has and how he plans to run things. And we couldn't be more excited to have him aboard. Honestly, you can't really find experience like that. <laughs> so yeah. uh, we're very much happy that he accepted and we're very much looking forward to a, a full season with him. Yeah, that'll be exciting for these players out there, the defensive players, uh, and just the, the whole team in general to, to learn from a guy that's played at the university level, D1, captain a team like that as well. Uh, that's going to be terrific for the team this year. Uh, talking about just preseason, 8-5 um, to five win over your guys' next-door neighbors, the Windsor Park Collegiate Royals, 8-5 uh, to five in that first game. And then yesterday you guys went up against Glen Lawn, uh, Obviously, not the same teams, but rematch of the 2019 2020 division B division finals. Yeah. Um, you know, two wins for you guys, a uh, high scoring affair in the first one against Windsor Park. Uh, you guys shut her down defensively and put up four goals against Glenlawn. Just speak about, you know, what, what impressed you the most from this team during the preseason. Well, on Friday, we played against last Friday, we played against WPC. Um, they they came out strong, uh, and so did we. Uh, we came out to a pretty good start. Uh, we had excellent goaltending to start the game, which gave us a boost to uh, get some offense going. Uh, we ended up going up 5-1, which was nice, uh, except we got complacent uh, after that. And the second half of the game was not good. And in terms of, uh, I mean, in theory, the second half of the game, we lost it because they scored four times to our three. So we lost the second half of the game. But the way, the way we finished the game wasn't good. And we as a coaching staff noticed that in terms of when you're up, like you can't stop playing because 
the other team is not just going to roll over and call it a day. And so they actually made it a game. It was five, four for a little bit. Uh, and just off like simple mistakes defensively that we weren't making in the first half. And all of a sudden we're making these mistakes now and they're ending up in the back of the net. So it's in that sense, in a preseason game, it's kind of good for the kids to, to see what happens when you stop playing. And so, uh, full credit to WPC on, on the comeback. I mean, it was a great, it was a great game, a very physical game and, and a good learning experience for the new guys. Uh, but yesterday we played Glenlawn and we had a, a lot of our vets who didn't play on, on the Friday game played last night and they look good. It was, it was great to see those guys again. It's great to coach them again. And uh, you can just tell that a lot of them had that chemistry that just hadn't left uh, just from the playoff run and, uh, yesterday we played a pretty complete game from the goaltending to the, to the defense, to the forwards. Uh, it was great to see everybody clicking, uh, making our passes, getting some good quality scoring chances. And, uh, yesterday was very encouraging for what we could see this year. I had a chance to look at you guys' uh, Instagram page, uh, just looking at the lineups you guys post before every game to just let everyone know who's uh, starting, right? Uh, two different uh, types of lineups, nine forwards, 60, two goalies against WPC, and then 12 forwards and 5D, two goalies, of course, against the Lions. Uh, is that what, what do you would you say is going to be the plan this year? Obviously, the team is made. Are you guys going to roll more with more defensemen out there or more forwards in the lineup? We, uh, we've always kept a roster of 20 guys. So we'll keep two, we kept two goalies, six defensemen, and 12 forwards. Uh, we've always rolled four lines uh, as, as long as I've been on this staff for it's my seventh season now. Uh, 60, so we'll have three pairs and we'll have a, a goalie tandem uh, that'll be interchanging throughout the year. We've always thought it'd be, it's best to have uh, that depth because uh, you get throughout the school year, you get injuries, you get academic issues happens every now and then uh, or other disciplinary issues, but it's good to have that depth because in high school, you can't call up anybody. And so right. if you are short, you're short and that's it. Whereas if you have the depth and you're short, we're still fine. And so last week we decided to go with three lines to kind of give uh, more ice time to, to certain players that uh, were in the process of being evaluated. Uh, and so that's why we decided to go with less lines. And then last night we decided, I mean, we had to give our players a chance to play because our regular season is next year and I can't have half the team having not played a single game yet. And so having those guys play at least one game was imperative. And so last night we decided to go with the four lines and, and, uh, and we only had 5D, but that's all that was able to make it for, for that game. So we didn't really have a choice. But yeah, um, but yeah usually we go four lines, we roll them. Uh, our three defensive pairs are also rolled steady and we have our interchangeable goalie tandem. And that's kind of the guy, the roster we choose to go with uh, on a yearly basis. Yeah, getting that uh, depth throughout the lineup, and of course injuries are it's just the the nature of things here in sports. So definitely good to have uh, plans in place to uh, combat that somewhat. Um, obviously, uh, you don't have to tell us where exactly the team is going this year, but it seems like Belvo always has that one big trip every year with their hockey team. Is that going to be happening again this year due to the pandemic or is the pandemic? Well, one thing I can tell you, uh, we will not be going anywhere in terms of a trip just because of uh, public health restrictions right. and, and you know, the, the pandemic happening uh, all around us. Uh, it's, it's just not a good, not a good time to go this year. Uh, even though, of course, it would be extremely fun as it always is. It's just, yeah, it's just not a good time right now. So we will be staying uh, in Manitoba this year. Yeah. Well, we'll have to wait for uh, next season. Hopefully that uh, public health restrictions, public health orders allows for teams to, you know, go out and travel safely, but uh, going to be a, a fun season. It's going to be starting up pretty soon uh, on the Instagram. You guys said that uh, waiting regular season schedule and division alignment, uh, talking about that first regular season game, whenever it's going to be just how, how exciting is that going to be knowing that the high school hockey is truly back. I know that the boys are, so excited to, to get back to it. Uh, even 
at the game last night, I spoke to a couple, couple of the vets, uh, who are, who played their first game and they, you know, they said it best. Like it just, it just feels different playing high school. I know some of them played, uh, in the community last year and they just said like, it's just so different to play with your classmates, to play with your buddies, to represent the school and stuff. It's just, it was missed. And I know that the home opener will be an emotional one, bittersweet one for, for many who had to take that year off last year. Uh, and there's just, you, you look at the roster and you can't help but get excited about the, the potential of this team. And game one is always everybody's favorite because everybody's full of energy and ready for it. And we're just, we're looking forward to it. Any, uh, before the, the home game or the season opener, is there going to be any, uh, game day festivities going on at the school getting people fired up or uh, what's going on there you know in a normal year i would say yes with certainty uh this year it's it's trickier a lot trickier um just in terms of capacity restrictions in in one room we'll say uh and so if we i don't think we'll be able to do the the homecoming celebration in the gym but i'm sure we'll think of something else to to get the folks all nice and ready for, for the home opener and the season. But uh, yeah, yeah, this year is very much of a, we're welcoming back a lot of different things very slowly. And so one day I'm sure the homecoming celebration will be back, but until then. Well, it's either I uh, I couldn't really understand or uh, talking because uh, the sound was kind of muffled or my French is kind of gone. Uh, either way, it's uh, <laughs> classic, classic during the school day to get announcements like that, right? Yeah, uh, but school is uh, so back. <laughs> yeah, it's back. It's back. And uh, Miguel's loving it. I'm sure everyone else is. But, uh, you know, talking about the fans, uh, obviously there's uh, – you know, going to be a bit different in terms of numbers this year with fans that can be in games, but uh, just to have fans back, how exciting is that going to be? As we all know, it's been well documented how crazy these uh, Barracuda fans are. Yeah, you know, uh, it's small steps this year. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what uh, what the rules will be once the season starts. Um, but just the fact that, you know, parents can come watch their kids some students can come watch their friends uh, just that alone has been has been pretty cool so far uh it's only been a couple of preseason games but there have been people that have come out and and supported uh while pu- following uh public health orders uh but one day when we can come back to normal and fill up the rink completely this i am very much looking forward to that day but for this year uh, just the fact that we can have some fans is a start. It's baby steps, but at this point, we're very much, like I said, on the whatever works. We're excited to play, and, and that's that's really the focus this year. We're happy to be playing after having a year off last year. Yeah, just to to see fans back in some capacity is just you gotta love seeing it. It's a huge part of the game as well. I think that that's been uh, well documented that you know, leagues like the NHL, when there's no fans in the, in the stands, it's kind of, it's odd. And then when you see fans in the stands, it's just, it feels like normal is back. And hopefully we can get to that point where, you know, we can have a fully capacitated arena, especially for you guys. Uh, last question before I let you go, awaiting the division alignment, you guys spent last season or 2019, 2022 seasons ago, I guess, in the B division, of course, uh, defending champions coming in. Is that going to be where you guys are going to be placed at again, just due to the roster being as strong as it is and just having that uh, championship on your resume? Yeah, so um, we actually submitted that today, so I will find out uh, sometime this week. But uh, the formula this year is relatively simple, uh, excluding last year, because last year there were no games, really. Uh, and there wasn't really a season for anybody, so it's kind of tough to to count that. But this year, the the committee decided to go with um, some sort of formula as to where you have played before. So, like your best level played prior to playing high school, whether that's AAA, AA, A1, two or three. And so, the makeup of our team in that regard is interesting. We have a couple of AAA guys. We have about ten AA, and the rest are A1. And so, we have an interesting makeup of a team. Uh, in terms of 
where we'd like to play. We, I would like to stay in B just because having seen those A teams that are filled with AAA caliber, we're just, we don't have that. And this year we cut six, six or seven kids. And so we don't have the luxury of having, you know, 50 people show up to camp and really choosing a really good team. We're kind of just, we've always had the situation where we just kind of dealt the hand we have in terms of, you know, whoever shows up, that's what we got kind of thing. Uh, and so we have interesting talent this year, uh, but we would hope to stay in, in the B division just out of, just to, you know, keep it competitive for the guys. Uh, we don't want to be placed in a situation where we're going to get blown out every game. That seems yeah. less fun. <laughs> yeah, that'd be no fun for anyone involved in that, right? Because if uh, you are those top teams uh, winning, obviously winning like that never gets old. But, uh, you know, that being said, if we're placed in A, I mean, it's, that's final. Whatever they decide is final. But if we're placed in A, then we're just going to have to be better. We're just going to have yeah. to practice better, work harder, and just be better because otherwise it's going to be a long year. Yeah, no doubt. So uh, if you get dealt that hand, just need to, to try to improve. We'll be ready, better. but yeah, it'll, we'll be ready. it'll change yeah. things for sure. Yeah, for sure. Well, let's see if the defending Winnipeg Free Press Division champions will stay in B Division this year, but uh, no matter where they are, hockey is back at a college Belleville exciting times and exciting to talk to you today uh head uh, assistant coach of the team Miguel Marcu thanks for coming on as always Miggs you take care thanks Graham talk to you later Why go solar? Solar is better than ever. Our revolutionary design and inverter equipment with the latest in solar panel technology for the ultimate in-home and business security. That's right, I said security. Grid security and security of your home are linked. Fortify your future today with a battery backup system. No maintenance, quiet running. Did you know in Manitoba, grid-connected, off-grid, and battery backup systems are 100% right off in the year you purchase for any company or farm? Do you want to back up your internet, keep your tills running, and the lights on? We can install a system that is right for you, with battery backup fully capable of taking on all those essential loads and keeping you running. When you call our experts at Evolve Green, ask about getting your free energy audit today. Call or email today to find out what system works best for you. 1-866-5-EVOLVE or support at evolvegreen.ca. Also, be sure to check out our website at www.evolvegreen.ca. Welcome back to Coffee with Graham on ASTV Productions. Miguel Mark, who assistant coach of the College Belvo Barracudas, joined me on today's edition of the show to talk some Barracudas hockey. I want to thank Miguel for coming on today's show and being the guest in this episode. I want to thank you, the viewer, for tuning in today, as well as our sponsors of Coffee with Graham and Fabricland Winkler, Evolve Green, AETI, and Murray Chrysler for sponsoring this edition of the show once again. I will be back on the network next week on Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Daylight Time for an all-new edition of Coffee with Graham. You can catch that episode on our Facebook or on our website. Of course, our Facebook being ASTV Productions, our website being ASTVProductions.com. And if we do go live on that episode, you can catch that one on our Twitter as well at Amateur Sports TV. But 
Until then, folks, signing off now, host of Coffee with Graham, Graham Forsyth, telling you guys to enjoy the rest of your Thursday. Stay safe out there and have a wonderful weekend as well. Until next Tuesday, I'll see you then, folks. Peace out.